All right, this is second grade, module three, lesson 21. And in this lesson, students are just gonna be using everything they've been learning uh, in the previous 20 lessons about place value and counting, crossing over the 100, crossing down past the 10, all that sort of stuff. And they're just gonna be um, in a very numerical, abstract way, away from these place value disks and the, and the charts and stuff. They're just gonna be doing it with numbers and they're gonna be completing patterns. And this is where, as teachers, we can formatively assess our students to see how much of that place value stuff did they learn and how much of it are we gonna to have to review as we move through future modules. So suppose students, we give our students this kind of beginning sequence, this pattern here, 342, 332, 322. The idea would be, well, what would be our next values? And so we want to give our students plenty of thinking time for them to recognize that in all cases, the hundreds seems to stay the same, and the ones seems to stay the same. So it looks like the thing that is changing is the tens place. So we want students to recognize that, oh, we're going down by 10. And that would mean the next value would be 312. And the next value would be 302. Now here's the tricky one. What's going to be this next value? And we want students to pull out those place value disks if they need to. But we really, we want students to start to see that our next value would be 292. And if we were to go even further, the next one after that would be 282. And that's the idea, is for students to start recognizing the pattern, what's going on, is it getting bigger or is it getting smaller? And how is it getting bigger or smaller? Is it the tens place that's changing, like here? Or is it the hundreds place or the ones place? And then fill in the list accordingly. So here's an example of what we're talking about. So students are going to, let's take a look at problem A. You have 396, you have 397, and we want students to recognize that, hmm, it's the hundreds place that are staying the same, the tens place that appear to be staying the same, and really it's just the ones place that's changing. And how is it changing? Well, it's getting bigger. So it looks like we can say that the pattern is it's getting bigger by one each time and so that gives us the ability to say oh the next answer will be 398 399 and uh oh what's the next one it's going to be 400 and then 401 oh let's take a look at uh, f oh my goodness so what we want students to see here this is going to be a little tricky is we have no values here, but we have the values way over here. We want students to look at these numbers and say, well, what's the same about the numbers and what's different? We want students to recognize that the 1 and the 6 are the same every time and that what's changing is the hundreds. Now, are the hundreds getting bigger or are the hundreds getting smaller? We want students to recognize, oh, it's getting bigger by 100 each time, which means the next value will be 416, 516, and sure enough, 616, 716, and the next one would be 816. So teachers, it's a two-step process. Take a look at how the numbers are changing. That's step one. Step two is, um, not only, well, I guess step one is really what numbers are changing, which place value is changing, and then step two is how is it changing? Is it getting bigger or smaller? And then fill in accordingly. So it's a two-step process. What's changing? Which place value? And then how is it changing? And then fill in the values. This is fun. Parents, teachers, you can make a bazillion of these to differentiate for your students. This is like differentiation in a can. It's super easy um, to just make up a bunch of these using grid paper and just write in a couple of digits and let your students have fun and filling in the rest, right? 
And so we want students to say that uh, in a place value, in a like basically a hundreds grid, this would be 207, 208, 209, 210. And then what is going to be directly beneath 207? It's going to be uh, 217. And sure enough, directly beneath 208 is 218. So teachers, this brings to mind your students need to be familiar with the 1 to 100 table or 0 to 99 table, uh, grid, and they need to be comfortable with filling it in. Personally, as a teacher, as a coach, I prefer the 0 to 99 grid over the 1 to 100 grid. Um, if you're interested, feel free to email me or leave a comment down in the video um, comment section, and I'll explain why. So we're going to keep filling these in. This becomes 227, and sure enough, there's 237. This is 228. 238, and we can see going left to right here, we can count backwards, get 226, 225. Going forwards, we get 229. Not sure why I used all these different colors. There's no secret meaning behind that. And that wraps up this entire module. That's grade two, module three, lesson 21. Wrapping up the entire module three. Woo-hoo! We are done with this module. Uh, we wrapped it up by allowing our students to complete patterns where we're really using the abstract numbers rather than relying on the place value disks.